All right, we're gonna get started with encrypting the web using HTTPS. A little bit about myself. So I do have my Twitter, my email, and my blog information there. I do have the slides and the code will be available and I have a link to that on the very last slide. So let's start with what is HTTPS? So HTTPS is a secure communication protocol. So you can think of it as it's HTTP. So everything you know about how HTTP works, status codes, uh, methods, all of that stays the same. It's just running over an encrypted channel using TLS. And one thing to note, browsers have really changed how they indicate if HTTPS is in use or not. In the past, you saw the familiar padlock Nowadays, browsers have been moving more towards a, I don't know if shaming is the right word, but if they don't think you're secure, they're progressively making it more obvious that you're not secure. So let's take a look at some of these things. So here I've got a basic web page. And so I've got a fictional travel page. And you can see that one of the things that changed probably a year and a half, two years ago, the browser started saying not secure. So really for us, that was a tipping point for changing our philosophy on which websites we felt needed to use HTTPS. At that point, all of our static sites, everything else we had, we wanted to make sure we started using HTTPS because that's a bad experience to have people hit your page using HTTP and seeing that. If I show the HTTPS version, we'll see uh, Edge is what I'm using, still happens to show a padlock there. Progressively, it's going to get more and more in your face if it's not using HTTPS. We talked about TLS. Um, so if you've heard of SSL, that was in use years ago, should not be used anymore. Uh, TLS is what you should be using, transport layer security. There's actually two versions. So version 1.2, is the requirement if you're doing PCI related work on your website, that's what people should be using for sure today, at least that level. Uh, version 1.3 came out recently and has been more and more adopted. Uh, there's a couple advantages to that, zero round trip restarts, things such as that. Uh, so you should be moving to that if that's possible for you. And if you're not sure, if you haven't seen Can I Use before, you can come out to caniuse.com and look up TLS and it will tell you, so can I use will tell you for a given feature how well it's supported. So I could come out here and see which browsers actually support TLS 1.3, which ones support 1.2 in case that has some impact on your rollout. So why HTTPS? So I've been doing web work for a really long time. Most at the beginning, we were focused on confidentiality. In other words, we needed HTTPS on parts of our website that sent credentials or sent credit cards. So we had portions of our website that didn't use HTTPS because we felt it was public information. It wouldn't matter if somebody intercepted it, it didn't need to be kept confidential. A couple of years ago, however, I started thinking more about it from an integrity standpoint. So if you've ever been on, you've been flying on a plane, if you happen to be browsing, this happens to be Southwest, and it actually took a web page and it embedded this banner at the bottom of the page. And at first that seemed kind of cool because you could see, well, we're you know an hour and eight minutes away from landing. The problem with it is if you start to think about it a little bit more, you had someone in the middle between you and the website you were actually on. So maybe I was on, you know, whatever site I happened to be surfing and this came up. So I was on some other website. Southwest was able to intercept the response coming back from the server and modify it to place this banner on it. So again, this happened to possibly be useful to me, but it really disturbed me just from the standpoint that anybody sitting in between could be making lots of modifications, adding malware, changing my content, uh, switching prices, adding bad pictures, all sorts of things. So it started to be a, a much bigger focus on, we don't need it just to protect the data in transit. We also have to worry about it not being tampered with. HTTPS also has authentication to some level. So I know 
when I connect to that server that it's connecting to the right host. And I'll show you some examples of that later. The other note, I like Scott Hanselman from Microsoft had this quote, uh, HTTPS, and at that time SSL, doesn't mean trust this website. In other words, it doesn't mean because you see a padlock that everything is perfect, right? That it's a completely secure web server. All it means is this is private. So you may actually be having a private conversation with Satan. So just be aware, HTTPS is just talking about we are keeping the traffic between your browser and your server private. Uh, that's all that it really claims. HTTPS by default, so this has been growing a lot in the last few years. <clears throat> so you can go check out this particular website. Uh, but it has a breakdown for what percent of the top sites actually use HTTPS by default. So in other words, you connect using HTTP, they will bump you up to use HTTPS. So if you go look at the graph and you look at it across the years, it's really grown in the last few years. If you spread this out to every internet website, it becomes single digits. In other words, <clears throat> major websites are all using HTTPS or vast majority of them are but there's a ton of sites that don't use it at all. When you wanna use HTTPS, uh, you're gonna to have to set up certificates. I won't spend a lot of time on this other than there are different types of server certificates that you can get. Um, the primary one today is called domain validation, which all that really says is I own a website, I will create a public private key pair, I will take my public key and go to a certificate authority. And all they want me to do is prove that I own the given domain. So in the past, you used to have to do a lot more proof that you were who you say you are. All that being done with domain validation is uh, they will grant me a certificate if I can prove that I own that domain. In the past, you used to have extended validation, where if you remember you, on the URL, you would see company names. Uh, that was dropped by major browsers a while ago, uh, just because most people who were using it weren't familiar with that. So if you're still using this, uh, it costs more money to get those sorts of certificates and you're really not getting any value anymore because the browsers don't display this. Uh, so paying the extra money really doesn't benefit you. Again, you need to pick a certificate authority. So when I get a certificate to set up HTTPS, a new one is letsencrypt.org has been around for a little while. Uh, they were the first major one to provide free certificates. So in the past, you were pretty much always paying. Now you can go to letsencrypt.org and get a free certificate. Um, it's just as secure. So don't let someone tell you that this certificate is somehow less valuable than others. Certificates are just your public key signed by an authority. Um, it doesn't matter um, security-wise, like the level of encryption is not controlled by your certificate. That's controlled by the ciphers you use. So if you want to get free certificates, Let's Encrypt is, is a good option. You can do self-sign. So I run my own uh, web server on my development machine. I don't want to have to go get an official certificate. I can do self-sign. Just be aware that if you do that, obviously, it won't help you for the public. The way the certificates work, browsers know about trusted certificate authorities and a self-signed one will get flagged. And again, I can show you at the end what that would look like. Another thing that's been happening recently with certificates is you can go out to, it's called certificate transparency. So every certificate that's issued now will put a certificate out in these logs. So you can actually set up alerting to make sure that phishing sites are not getting certificates that shouldn't have been issued to them in your name. So just be aware that's another thing that's been happening lately with certificates. So what happens when you want to switch your website to use HTTPS? So I just wanted to call out, we transitioned, like I said, we had a lot of static websites that we switched over. So all of our sites now use HTTPS, the public facing. And a couple of the notes that you want to know if you use social counts. So if you do like buttons for Facebook, things like that, just be aware those are URL dependent. So if you have those on your HTTP version of the site and maybe you had 105 likes, for instance, when you switch to HTTPS, 
Uh, the social providers view that as a completely new URL, and you'll probably lose your count and start back at zero. So that's one of the negatives. The other problem you'll run into is you'll have mixed content. And so I'll show you a couple examples here in the code that I've supplied. So in this case, we've got the same page that we had before, but you'll notice that even though I'm using HTTPS, it tells me this page is not secure. So why is that? Uh, it's very handy. Dev tools now and browsers help you find this. This used to be hard to find. If I come to the security tab, so I hit F12, I went into Dev tools, I'm on edge again. If I hit, hit Control F5, it tells me I have mixed content. And it shows me right here, here's the domain that's the problem. And if I click on it, it will tell me specifically it's the bridge walk. So if I went and looked and I clicked on this, I could see that it's <coughs> referencing using HTTP, which is the problem. My page uses HTTPS, this uses HTTP. Therefore, I, it looks like I'm not secure, even though I am, which is unfortunate. We'll talk about how you can fix that. The other one is if you have mixed active. So in this case, that was just an image. So browsers consider that to be a passive thing. They're still willing to uh, show the page. They just warn you. In this case, if you remember this carousel, um, active means I have something like JavaScript that's not using HTTPS. That's a lot more severe because if somebody were to intercept that, they could actually change the JavaScript and make my page behave differently. So browsers choose what they wanna do. I, I find it odd they don't say not secure here. Everything looks okay visually, but if you click on my carousel, my carousel is now dead. So Edge and Chrome have decided uh, they feel active JavaScript using HTTP uh, shouldn't be allowed to work. And so they break that functionality, okay? So let's look at a couple ways that you could fix these things. Um, the first one is I could use protocol list URLs. So if I were to go back, let's look at the mixed passive. If I were to click on that particular link, if you weren't aware of this, you can reference your stuff here without saying HTTP. So if I say, for instance, this. So I've done this for years. And what this does is it says it will figure out the right protocol to use based on what your page has. So rather than specify, I can put HTTPS if I want, um, but if I do this, no matter what page this gets linked from, it will properly use the right protocol. So I've used that for a long time as a safety. What I like to use now is called a content security policy. So you can actually set either in a meta tag, which I'll show you, or you can set it at your server level. And what this does is newer browsers will use this security policy to decide what to do. So I'm gonna show you the two variants there. So let's go back to our examples. So I've got an upgrade. So if I look at this and I go back and do an inspect, I still have HTTP here. So I still have it wrong. But what I added to this page, if we go to the very top, I added a meta tag with this content security policy. And I said, please upgrade all insecure requests. So browsers, modern browsers all understand this. They will see that meta tag and that will tell them that even though it used HTTP in my link, I wanna use HTTPS. So it transparently switched it to HTTPS for me. And now you can see that even though I have it wrong, I don't have the problem with the padlock anymore. And if I go to the bottom, you can see I'm referencing the JavaScript wrong, like I was in the active case, that also automatically got fixed. So that's a choice. You can do it in the meta tag as I do here. I did that for you because it's easy to demo. I would set that actually on my web server. So you can actually go configure your web server to return a response header with that content security policy. And then any page on your entire site will automatically get converted so that your HTTP things that are wrong will get switched to HTTPS. So this would be handy. It happens a lot in practice. So it turns out 
I noticed this. I was looking at the mini star schedule and I saw the not secure and they had the same issue, <clears throat> right? They just had a reference to an HTTP that was wrong. So I sent to them, they fixed it right away, which was great. It started showing secure for me, which is what we want. We want people to have confidence in this. Uh, being able to set that at your server level would ensure that your entire site is just automatically going to be okay. I'm not that nice in general. I actually set block all mixed content. And so what that will do is if I go back to this page, I'm also setting it as a meta tag, but I'm telling it, please break things. So you'll notice it shows my image wrong. My carousel doesn't work. Um, why would I do that? Uh, I do that because I believe people should test their stuff. And so if I set this, I can ensure that across all the browsers, it will clearly break things. So if you have it coded wrong, and the reason I do that is I want you to fix it because there are a few older browsers that don't support the content security policy that would be wrong. They wouldn't automatically get upgraded. So personally, I like to set this. I would set block all mixed content at a server level. Uh, you can choose which one you want to do. Maybe you try the upgrade insecure first. Um, but I find if you do the block all mixed in your stage environment, people are testing, they'd be able to catch things that are wrong. So these are just some good hints. If you do these things, your transition in from HTTP to HTTPS will be a lot smoother. How do you do this? So obviously, if you have a site that doesn't use HTTPS at all today, you need to configure that. We don't have the time and everybody has different environments you can look into. How do I get a certificate? How do I set it up? My recommendation after that is the first week you do it, you start doing 302 redirects. In other words, if somebody comes to your site using HTTP, you redirect them to the same URL using a 302, which is a temporary redirect. And the reason you want to do it temporary is because if you find out you did anything wrong and you have to shut it off, uh, you don't want people to have permanent redirects cached in their browser and they wouldn't be able to get to your site anymore if you had turned off HTTPS when you rolled it back. So I recommend do 302 for a week or two, make sure everything's okay. Then you wanna to switch to a 301 redirect. So if people type a HTTP, they'll get permanently redirected. Uh, the good news is search engines will transition their links when they see that, and people will not have to go through that hop again. They'll remember in their browser cache, that if they type HTTP, it should go to HTTPS. So that's handy. I started using instead this HTTP strict transport security. And what this does is you set a response header for your website and say, I want you to remember to never come back to my site using HTTP again for a period of time. So again, I started this out at maybe 30 minutes. Once I knew things were working, I switched it to a day. Now I've increased it to a year. So what that means is every URL, the difference is when I did 301 redirects, it only remembered specific URLs that were redirected. When I set this HTTP strict transport security, you will connect to me the first time using HTTP. I will redirect you. I'll send you back and say, please don't use HTTP for a year again. Anybody who types or has a link, it doesn't matter. They will never come to your site again using HTTP. They will automatically start with HTTPS, which is great. Once you get that working, you should look into doing uh, HSTS preload. What that means is if, and there's a bunch of rules with it, so you can go out to that site and read about them. But if your site can use it, you can tell the browsers to bake into the browser to never let anyone use HTTP. So that is nice because even if the first time I ever come to your site, if I type HTTP, I'll never have that first trip to your server using HTTP because it'll be baked into the browser. The browser will look at its list and say, this site only wants HTTPS, so you'll never have that first time exposure. So if you can do that, I recommend you do that as well. And again, this is just the progression. Do this over a course of weeks once you gain confidence that everything you're doing is correct. The other reason to move to HTTPS, a lot of features require HTTPS. So all of the features I have listed, browsers have said, we're not going to implement new features if you don't use HTTPS. 
So they're going to force you to do this, really, whether you want to do it or not. Uh, these are things that today you already need HTTPS for. People have concerns with HTTPS because of the history. You know, is it too slow? So I've broken out each of the concerns and gave you an answer. So if you're concerned this might hurt your performance, go look at that. Is TLS fast yet? Uh, there have been a lot of production studies with the impact that HTTPS has on your site and your performance. If you're concerned about cost, uh, when you used to have to pay for certificates, now you can use letsencrypt.org, which gives you free certificates. And years ago, uh, when I would troubleshoot, I, I would be fine in the HTTP. As soon as I switched to HTTPS, I couldn't troubleshoot anymore. I use Fiddler, uh, and I can't see the traffic anymore. Well, Fiddler and Wireshark both allow you to set them up on your local machine so that you can actually decrypt the HTTPS. So be aware of that. And again, I gave a link here of how to do it in Wireshark. If you're familiar with Fiddler, you can just go into Tools Options and say, I want to decrypt HTTPS. What it does is Fiddler sits between your browser and your server. And so when Fiddler sees a request for HTTPS, it actually generates a fake certificate acting like it's the server on your machine so that the browser will encrypt with that certificate. Then Fiddler can decrypt it. And then Fiddler uses the real server certificate to do the encryption again. So it's secure end to end, but that lets Fiddler get in between. And when you set that up, you'll say, yes, I trust this. It's just on your machine. It's not uh, breaking anything. It didn't uh, break how HTTPS works. It just used a smart technique as a proxy so that now I can still troubleshoot sites that use HTTPS, which is good. A couple quick tools. Um, again, the names should be different, but they haven't changed them yet. One of them is bad SSL. So if you come out here and you want to know how does a browser behave when it goes to a site with an expired certificate, you can see what the behavior will be. So it's hard to simulate some of these things. I talked about, you know, what if you had a self-signed certificate? It's going to tell you it's not a valid cert. So it's just a cool place to be able to check out how browsers behave when certain um, HTTPS issues occur. Another one is SSL Labs. If you set up your web server and you want to get a grade for how well are you configured for HTTPS, you can come out here and put in your host name, and it will actually go grade you on are you using secure ciphers and a whole bunch of other stuff, which is handy. Some good resources. So if you want to see exactly how TLS works, uh, this is a free book, High Performance Browser Networking, where you can see the handshake that goes on, how the certificate is sent, how it falls down to symmetric encryption, all that kind of stuff. Um, does my site need HTTPS? It's kind of a cool site. Yes, all sites need S uh, HTTPS. So years ago, I would have said, no, grandma's quilting site doesn't need to use HTTPS. Now that the browser says not secure and people are intercepting even static sites, you do need it. And this goes into a lot of the arguments for why people don't want it and why you should still use it. By the way, I'll show you a quick perf thing. So this is HTTP. That's HTTPS. So that seems odd, right? Why is HTTPS faster? It's doing encryption. The reason it's faster is HTTPS lets me use HTTP2, which is why that turned out to be a lot faster. If you have any more doubts, you can follow this. If you know Troy Hunt, a security expert with Have I Been Pwned, Somebody challenged him on Twitter and said, my static website does not need to use HTTPS. So he got permission from the person to prove to him why he does. And it's just hilarious what he does. He's not actually hacking the person's web server. He's showing you that without HTTPS, uh, what people can do to you. So I won't spoil the ending. It's about 25 minutes long. But if you think you don't need HTTPS because you only have a static site, please go look at that because you do. Again, if you have any questions, that's my Twitter, that's my email, and my blog information. Uh, that's a link to the slides and the code. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And I do have another talk next Thursday on Pi-hole. So if you hate web ads on your phones and game consoles and browsers in your house, 
I will show you how to set up pie hole to block all of those. Uh, so that's all that I had. So thank you for coming.